compare to is another useful method. It's not in the uh, class big O object there. Right? So compare to is what's called is uh, comes from an interface called comparable. So many value type objects, so things like counters or dates, strings, numbers, right? They all have what's called a natural ordering, right? So in other words, it makes sense that you can ask is one thing less than or greater than the other. Strictly speaking, this has a more uh, technical definition, but for now, for our purposes, this is fine. Right? So for two values, x and y, it makes sense that you uh, want to ask the question, is x less than y? Right? So for example, if you want to sort a list of stuff, it's nice if you can compare. Uh, you have to be able to compare uh, the objects in the list. Right? So things like numbers, these are all comparable. Right? Strings, you can compare it in dictionary order. Dates, you can compare by chronological order, right? What about points? Well, points, it's less clear how you want to compare them, right? You might compare points by their distance from the origin, right? You might compare them by just their x coordinate. You might compare them by their y coordinate, right? Uh, so there's lots of ways you could compare points. There's no one sensible, there's no one obvious way that you would do it, right? However, if your class does have what's called a natural ordering, then you should consider providing the compare to method uh, for people that use your class. Right? And the way you do that is you implement the comparable interface. So this is the first example of a class where we're actually going to implement an interface. Uh, doing so lets people who use your class compare your objects um, uh, using less than or greater than. Right? Uh, and that lets people, for example, oops, sorry, sort arrays or lists of, uh, of your objects, right? Or they can also use some kind of sorted set, like a tree set or a tree map. Okay, so what's an interface? So an interface, remember, is just a bunch of methods that have no implementation, right? So list is an interface, set's an interface, and so on. Right? The comparable interface has just one method. So if you actually go and look at the source code for comparable, it looks like this. Right? So public, it's an interface, not a class. Right? Uh, the name is comparable. It's got this less than and greater than, so it's got these angled brackets, so you know that this is a generic interface. Right? And it has one method. So the method is compare to, uh, and it returns an int. Okay, so a class that uh, implements an interface promises to provide every method that's in the interface. So if we're going to implement the comparable interface, we have to put compare to into our class. Right, so what does compare to do? So this is copied directly from its uh, documentation. Compare to compares this object with the specified object for order. Right? So in other words, it's x dot compare to y. So x is compared with y for order. Right? Returns a negative integer, zero or positive, as this object is less than, equal to, or greater than the other object. Right, so if x dot compare to y, sorry, if x is less than y, then x dot compare to y returns a negative value. Right, if x is greater than y, then x dot compare to y returns a positive value. If they're equal, then compare to returns zero. Compare to throws this exception uh, if you pass in an object that you can't compare uh, to the object that was used to call the method. Okay, so suppose we want to compare points uh, using their distance to the origin. Right? So what steps do you need to compare two points? Right? So x dot compare to y. Right? I need to compute the distance that x is from the origin. I need to compute the distance that y is from the origin. And then I need to compare the two distances. Right? So we're going to compute the distance from the origin for this point. Compute the distance from the origin for the other point. Right, and then compare the two distances. We return a positive integer value. If this point is farther from the origin than the other point, you return a negative integer value. If this point is closer to the origin, and you return zero if the points are equidistant from the origin. Right. Notice here that we're not returning zero if the two points are equal. Right? We're returning two point, uh, zero if the two points have the same distance from the origin. Okay, so to implement compare to, or to implement the comparable interface, 
you have to change your class. Right? So in the class header, you now have to say that it implements comparable and you want to compare two points, so comparable point Q. Right? If you don't put this in, but you do put in a compare to method, uh, then people still can't sort your uh, objects of your, uh, of your class uh, because the sorting methods all look for whether or not the class implements this interface. Right? So in other words, you can put compare to in the class without implementing the interface, uh, but that doesn't actually do what you want it to do. Right? If you want to implement the interface, you have to say that you're implementing that interface. Right? So once you say that you're going to implement comparable, you are now obliged to provide the compare to method. Right? It's always public int compare to. The type here is always, well, for, for our purposes, is always the same as the type of the class. Right? So that thing there is that thing there. The name is always compared to. The return value is always an int. The access modifier has to be public. OK, so how do we compute the distance of the, this point to the origin? Right, so this distance. Right, so for points, it's x squared plus y squared. Take the square root. Right? Uh, the problem with computing it that way is that if the coordinates of the point are very large, then x squared will uh, over, well, won't overflow. x squared can saturate to become positive infinity. y squared can saturate to become positive infinity. The sum can also saturate to become positive infinity. It turns out there's a clever way to compute the distance where you avoid all of that, sat where you avoid the saturation. Right? So in other words, you can uh, compute the distance um, to the origin uh, for, for many points, avoiding uh, any um, saturation of the values, uh, of the intermediate values. Right? So you don't need to know how to do that. Someone's already implemented that for you. The method called hypot computes the hypotenuse of a triangle, right? avoiding any um, numerical issues. So we already have a method that does this for us. We might as well use it now that you know about it. Right? Uh, so that's the way to compute the distance. And that's, you can compute the other distance using the same method. Right? You're just going to pass in other x and other y. And now we compare the two distances. Right? So if this distance is greater than the other distance, we have to return a positive integer value. It doesn't matter which one. Right? So it's up to you as to what value you return. I'm just going to return 1. Uh, if this distance is less than the other distance, I have to return a negative integer value. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to return minus 1. Right? Otherwise, the distances are equal, so we have to return 0. Right? And so there's the return 0 at the end. And that's it. It's not hard. It's usually not difficult to implement the method. Right? OK, so you can actually avoid that if statement um, because the class double actually has a compare method in it that does exactly what you want. Right? So inside all of the wrapper classes, so integer, double, float, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they all know how to compare uh, values of their type. Right? So double knows how to compare two double values and return a value that's uh, suitable for use with compare to. Right? So the method's called compare. Right? Compares these two values, returns negative, zero, or positive. If that thing is less than, equal to, or greater than that thing there. Right? And now this is really easy to implement. Right? You just rely on the class, uh, the methods provided by the standard library. That's why the standard library is there. Right. Okay, so compare to actually has a contract that's described in the documentation for the comparable interface. Right. So like equals, uh, the description of the contract is fairly mathematical. Right. So the contract ensures that compare to has what a mathematician would say is a natural ordering. We're not really concerned with exactly what the uh, contract says. Right? One part of what we are concerned with, though, is whether or not compare to is consistent with equals. Right? Now back here, right, so for our points, right, remember uh, we return 0 if the distances between the two points, uh, the, the distance from the origin for the two points are, is e are equal. Right? We're not returning 0 if the two points' coordinates are equal, right? It's if their distances are equal. 
So in other words, two points on the same circle will always, uh, compared to will always return zero, right? Equals will only return true, uh, true if the two points have the exact same coordinates, right? So here we have a situation where compared to returns zero when equals does not, right? Equals only returns zero, uh, equals o when equals does not return true, sorry. Equals only returns true if the coordinates are the same. Compared to returns zero if the two points are on the same circle centered on the origin. Right? And so this is what related to what's called consistency with equals. Right? We say that compare to is consistent with equals. Right? When compare to returns zero and equals returns true. Right? And if x equals y returns true, then x compared to y also returns zero. Right? So if you remember your math, this is if and only if. Right? So in other words, x compared to y returns zero if and only if x equals y returns true. Right? Then we say that the uh, two methods are consistent with one another. It's not required that compared to be consistent with equals. Right? So for example, x compared to y can return zero. Uh, if it returns zero, then x equals y is allowed to return false, which is exactly the case for the point two compared to method that we just implemented. Right. Similarly, you can have two points, uh, or sorry, two objects that are equal, and yet compare to does not return zero. Right. So you can actually cook up cases for both of these uh, that are sensible um, if you think about it for a little while. Right. The first one is easier to come up with than the second one, I think. Right. Uh, but it is possible to come up with instances where um, uh, compared to is not consistent with equals. Right. It's a little bit weird, this last one, right? Two things are equal, but compared to says they're not equal, right? which is a bit odd. The first one's not so surprising. Okay, um, just let me quickly check what's, okay, here it is. So if you're comparing fields of float or double, then you should use float compare and double compare instead of less than, greater than, and equals to, right, uh, to um, implement your method. Right. Uh, unless we, right, okay. So the reason you should do this is, uh, so is a little bit obscure, right? If you use equals equals with two double values or two float values, right, you have to remember that uh, minus zero is equal to zero for floating point, uh, is equal to positive zero for floating point values. If you use double compare or float compare, uh, minus zero is less than positive zero. Right. Um, and so what that lets you, so what that does is that really does enforce what's called a total ordering, right? So every element, every double value actually has a unique place uh, when they're sorted. Right. So double compare ensures, uh, actually, will ensure that minus zero always compares to uh, positive zero as being less than. Equals equals doesn't do that. Neither does less than or greater than. Right. So if you're working with floating point values, consider using float compare and double compare instead. It's not difficult to uh, mess up your compare to implementation. Right. So there are cases where uh, it's pretty easy to come up with a case where you implement compare to and you think it's correct, but it turns out it's not. Right. If that happens to you, then anything that relies on compare to starts to behave strangely. Right? So things like the sorted sets or the sorted maps, right? They now behave weird. Uh, they 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 don't behave the way you want them to. Right? Because internally, tree set and tree map uses compare to to keep their elements sorted. Right? The sort method in collections uses compare to to sort a list. Right? Similarly, uh, there are methods in arrays um, that uh, operate on sorted lists, uh, sorted arrays, right? Internally, they use compare to to compare elements, right? In particular, the uh, binary search method in arrays uh, uses compare to, right? So compare to is another one of these useful and important methods. Because it's useful and important, it's uh, important that you actually implement them correctly. Okay, so one more time. So let's look at the counter version of compare. Right, so counters, remember the counter class is just something that counts, right? So comparing two counts seems like it should be pretty easy to do. Uh, 
So uh, we can implement comparable for the counter class. Right? And in this case, there's a very simple implementation for compare to. Right? We can take this value and subtract the other value. Right? And this produces the correct result, or a correct result. Right? If the two values are equal, then you get zero. Right? So that's what we want. If this value or this counter value is greater than the other value's counter, then this produces a positive value, which is what we want. If this counter's value is less than the other counter's value, then this produces a negative value, which is, again, what we want. Right? Uh, and now the returned result actually contains some information. Right? So it returns the difference between the two counter values, which could be useful to someone. Right? It might be useful to know what is the difference between the two counters. Right? When you write this, right, the very first question you should ask is, is this thing going to overflow? Right? So does it overflow? Or can it overflow? Anybody want to guess? 50-50. Anybody, anybody? So when could this overflow, right? So you're subtracting some value, right? So this will overflow if that thing is negative and large, right? Can the other value be negative for a counter class? The answer is no, right? The class is implemented with a class invariant, right? The invariant says the value of a counter is never negative. So this value is always positive, that value, or zero. That value is always positive or zero. So this never overflows and is therefore correct. Don't do this in general. Right? That's almost guaranteed to get you in trouble if there's uh, no guarantees on the value of the field. Right? Okay, that's it for today. And I guess that's it for the week. I'm going to see you after reading week. Everybody have a good reading week. Uh, try to get some rest. And um, see you in a week and a half. <laughs>